Well, good morning, folks. Today is November the 7th, and it's the opening of the muzzleloader season here in Tennessee. The sun's not up yet. It's just starting to break daylight here. And um, I'm heading to a stand that I hunted once this year and pretty much left it alone. But anyway, uh, I've seen quite a bit of rutting activity in the last week or so. And um, my other stand there is where I encountered a couple of good sized bucks, but I wanted to hunt this stand this morning. I just saw some, some deer in my backyard. There were some does and a few little ones. And uh, so deer are definitely on the move this morning. So anyway, this is getting close to that sign that I found earlier last week. So let's get on up in the stand and get settled in and see what comes along. Folks, I slept in here pretty early this morning before the sun came up. And I've been sitting here for right at three hours and haven't seen hide nor hair of a deer. Seen lots of squirrel activity. Been a good morning to bring a 22 rifle in here. Had squirrels all around me, but uh, no deer. And this is the rut. Now I have heard several distant gunshots and you know how it is during the rut I mean you could be sitting there one moment and then the next they're right on top of you so I may sit here just a little bit longer and see what happens there's a gunshot just heard another one well good morning today's November the 8th, second day of muzzleloader season, and I just sat down here, and there was a buck chasing a doe right through here. I couldn't tell what it was, it was still too dark, I couldn't tell what size the deer was. The sun's not up yet, here's a view to the east. still hear some movement back there in the brush. But anyway, the wind is just perfect. Let's see here. Yeah, it's going that way. So I'm just going to sit here and Watch the morning unfold. It's just that same little spike buck that I've been seeing for the last week or two. He's chasing that little bitty doe. 
I just heard a deer behind me here. There's a buck right there. Chasing big time. came through was a good mature buck but one side of his rack was a little bit messed up he chased that doe that just came through here that's three bucks so far four four bucks the chase phase is definitely on that buck chased that doe right down through that holler right there See if they come back. I may go ahead and decide to take him this morning. See what happens here.
like that walk. A year from now, that'll be a dandy bug. I think I see a mature bug there. Well, that deer where I shot right there just ran off and there's another one standing right there not 10 yards I think I heard him crash right over here but I'm gonna give him some time this thing about hunting with a muzzle loader <laughs> Especially when you're using traditional black powder. There's so much smoke you can't really see the reaction of that deer right after you shoot. But it looks like he went right over there. And I thought I heard him crash. We'll give him about 10, 15 minutes and then we'll get down and look. Been a lot of activity here this morning. So that one buck came in from behind me there and then he walked right here. I decided to let him go and then earlier I saw that other big mature buck come in and chase that other doe and I saw that buck and another one come in and confront this one that came in from behind me here. And when that one stepped out right there, I took the shot. So we'll wait just a second. We'll get down and see what we can find. Folks, I think I see that deer. It looks like he's down. I went ahead and run some cleaning patches through my muzzle loader, and I'm going to reload it once I get down. I believe he's down. There's another deer over there with him. I'll get down here and take a look at him here in just a second. Okay, here's some tips for all you beginning muzzleloader hunters. Before you go after that deer, make sure that you load your rifle. Now, I just ran some a wet patch and some dry patches through the barrel and recharged the gun. You know, um, you don't know for sure 
what kind of a hit you made before you go after that deer, even before you go to where you hit that deer. You need to make sure that you're ready because that deer could still be alive somewhere sitting there watching you. And he'll get up and run and you need to make a another shot to be able to take that animal down. So before you do that though, before you go after him and before you load your rifle, make sure that there is no percussion cap on this percussion nipple. Just like I mentioned in the video where I featured this old rifle or any muzzle loader, um, there doesn't need to be any source of ignition when you recharge this gun. Safety first. You know, you, you're kind of nervous, you just shot a deer, you're ready to go after it. Sometimes you don't make the best decisions right away, you know, so give yourself some time, calm down, clean your gun, that'll give you a little bit of time. <clears throat> and then before you go to that spot, make sure that your gun is loaded. So I'm going to go ahead and put a cap on this rifle. Here I got my percussion cap dispenser here. Hammers on half cock. That's your safety. Now you're ready to go track that deer. So I've got him marked here. I'm going to leave my day pack and stuff here. I got him marked right over here where I took the shot. A lot of times with a muzzle loader, especially these old traditional rifles, you don't always get a blood trail right away, but I think I made a pretty good hit on that deer. Look there, there's a scrape right there. I've got that deer on video where he made that scrape. That was a mature old buck that had one side broken off, and I believe that was him that came up behind this deer. came up right through here and then that other deer came back around and I took him right there so anyway I remember this little crooked tree right here it was standing right about there actually he took one step forward I waited for him to step forward a little bit before I took the shot he was just slightly quartered away he was standing right here Actually, he was moving in this direction when I shot. And there's blood right there. Blood and hair on the ground. I'll take you through this blood trail just like I did last year with that first video book. <laughs> and there's blood on the ground. Right blood there. I'll take you right through the recovery of this deer. See now I thought he went up that way. But he didn't. He came right down through here. So that's what happens. You're a little bit excited. Looks like he's leaking on both sides there, folks. There's blood here and there's blood there. I'm bleeding. That bullet actually went through. Okay, there's blood. Just the kind of blood trail you want. It's easy to follow. You always want to look ahead. See if your deer is just ahead and right there he is. Keep following the blood trail. See where he went. And he's really spewing out right there.
screw and I'm starting to stumble right there. You see how the leaves are pushed up? I'm stumbling right here. blood everywhere. That's what a mortally hit deer trail looks like. And there he is, folks. You can see here they stumbled a little bit. There's some lung tissue right there. That big lead bullet knocked a hole in pretty good on the other side, I believe. You always want to approach these deer from behind. Make sure he's dead. Let's see what kind of rack he's got here. Another eight point. Pretty heavy deer there. Good brow times. Nice brow times. Well, we know we've taken this deer. We'll go ahead and unload this rifle. Save that cap for another day. And there you have it, folks. That's a successful deer hunt with my 50 caliber Thompson Center Hawking rifle. Been a long time since I've killed a deer with this gun. But that right there makes it all worth it. Well, it's getting heavy right here on the outer parts of, of the beam there. there. He's got a little bit of character to that rack. That's a good mature whitetail there. So anyway, I'm going to get him out of here, get him cleaned up, field dressed, and get him cooled off so that we have good quality meat. And that's the reason we do this, folks. That's the reason I do this. I'm all out of deer meat, and now I can stock my freezer with roasts and steaks. So I'm going to go haul him out of here, and uh, I'll be with you shortly with some closing thoughts. Okay folks, before I get ready to move this animal, Tennessee has a new regulation this year. It's called tag before you drag. So you want to go ahead and check it in, use your license. And you can either use a tag that you've printed out or you can use your phone. You can download the app That's the app that you want to download, okay? You want to wait for it to come up so that you can enter your uh, information. And here you have report your harvest. So I'll go ahead and click on that. Okay, now I've got all my information entered the date of the harvest, the species, the sex of the deer, how many points are on his right side and left side, the length of each point. They want to know if it's more than, let's see, more than one inch. And all of these are more than one inch. So make sure you enter this cor correctly. And then at the bottom it says save and submit. Okay, now, once you submit the information, it gives you a confirmation number. It says your harvest record is complete. And it tags.
eggs are no longer required for this harvest. Okay, and it gives me my confirmation number, so I'm good to go. Well, here's the buck that I harvested this morning, and I wanted to get him out here in the open where you can get a better look at him. Pretty decent eight pointer, got good brow time length. I can see here where he's been rubbing. There's a tree bark, pieces of cedar bark, and other saplings where he's been rubbing his horns. So a lot of the deer sign that I've been seeing lately was probably made by this buck, although I saw several other deer. Now here's a rub right here behind me that could very well have been made by this deer here. You know, I saw six different bucks this morning and three of them were good mature whitetails, this being one of them. The point I was trying to make also, when you see these little bucks walking around, you know, if they come past your stand, little fork horns and six pointers and spikes and everything, you need to let those guys go, you know, if you want to harvest a mature whitetail. I had several deer come right by my stand and a lot of them have great potential. They just got to have time to grow. Now I've harvested bigger deer than this in the past, but you know, I'm really thankful to be able to take this deer and I thank the Lord for giving me the opportunity to do so because I really wanted to get my old traditional muzzleloader out. This is my old Thompson Center Hawk and Rifle that I started muzzleloader hunting with many, many years ago. And I wanted to get it out today and do some hunting with it. And I featured this old gun where I did some target shooting a few weeks ago. And if you haven't seen that video, go check out my channel. You'll see just how well this old rifle can shoot. I was using patched round balls on targets and I also sighted it in using the Hornady 385 grain uh, Great Plains bullet. And that's what I use to harvest this deer. And I always have in the past. Those bullets perform very well. So, you know, when you can get an old gun like this out that you haven't used in a long time and, and uh, get, have good success in harvesting a deer, that just makes it that much more rewarding. So uh, anyway, I noticed that where I hit this deer, he was slightly quartering away from me. If you look at the video, he was kind of headed a little bit away. So I, I put the sights about that far behind the shoulder on the other side. And that's when I squeezed it off. When he stepped forward, he was, he was walking real slowly away from me and I waited till he moved that <clears throat> leg forward just a little bit. So let me get this deer field dressed, get him cooled off and cleaned. And uh, I'll be back with y'all in just a few minutes. Well, let me apologize for that little delay in between, but I had to get that deer on ice and uh, get it hung up, skinned and quartered up pretty quickly because it got really warm today. It got up to 80 degrees and here it is November, you know, but that's the way it goes. You know, if you don't like the weather here in Tennessee, stick around because it's going to change. And I've said it before, but it's definitely true. But. Uh, Anyway, I was really glad to be able to get this old rifle out. I haven't hunted with this old gun in some 15 odd years. I think that's about how long it's been since I've killed the last deer with it. But uh, I was real thankful that I was able to use this gun successfully again. The old Hawkin came through again, you know, and it shot very true when the moment of truth arrived. So. Uh, if you own an old rifle like that and you want to get out and hunt with it, make sure it's sighted in good, I don't think you'll have any problems. The uh, bullet that I was using, once again, is the Hornady 385 grain hollow point. That's a big chunk of lead, folks, and uh, that bullet has done the job for me in the past many times. Harvested a lot of deer with that bullet right there. And the load that I had in there, after I shot the deer, I, I went ahead and reloaded the gun. I needed to unload it so now I can go and clean it. That's a shot at 50 yards. So it's, it's pretty well dead on still. So, you know, if you have one of these old guns and you haven't used it in a while because you've gotten an inline like I have, you know, it's every now and then it's, it's kind of a, a, uh, nostalgic thing to get the old gun out and 
actually be able to successfully harvest a deer with it. They're more than capable of doing that, as you can see from the video. Well, with that thought, let me uh, close out here and tell you I really appreciate you watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Lots of deer action in this video and uh, lots of interaction between the deer. There's still quite a few deer in the area because when I left there, there were lots of deer that were running off. So, you know, that, that particular section of woods still is a, a prime place to go back to. So I'm going to let it rest for a while and then hunt that again. Hopefully I'll get a big doe next time, and that's pretty much what I'm after. So if you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing and hit the like button and smash the bell icon. That way you'll know when more videos like this will be coming your way. So until next time, this is the Cumberland Outdoorsman wishing you well. And if you like to get out and go hunting, fishing, hiking, shooting, camping, whatever it is you like, I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. Y'all stay safe out there and enjoy the great outdoors. We'll see you next time.